Hello and welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Hope you had a good week. Tonight we're going to talk about the fuel rail pressure sensor in the common rail. This is a high pressure sensor. One of the most common misconceptions about this sensor is that it should be reading zero when there's no fuel pressure in the rail. When in fact, if the sensor reads anywhere between about 500 to minus 500 PSI, it's probably okay. That's acceptable. And so uh, a lot of people will change that sensor or they'll say to me, oh, I looked and, and I had the sensor in the rail. There was no fuel in the rail and I, it, had, it was reading 497 pounds. So I'm, I ordered a new one. Well, no, that's normal. Why? Because the sensor is designed to read accurately between about 4,000 and 40,000 PSI. Now, there's a couple different sensor, sensor part numbers. Uh, for example, the ISX-12 has a different sensor part number than the B67. And that's because the ISX-12 does command 40,000 PSI. And the B67 probably should never get over around 25,000 PSI maximum. So uh, there are a couple different part numbers. The Early generation sensors just read the pressure in the rail. The new sensors have what's called a rationality sensor built in them. How can you tell the difference by looking at the sensor if it's in your hand? Well, the early sensor that just read the pressure has three terminals in the sensor. Ground, 5 volt feed, and signal. The rationality sensor has a fourth pin in there, and that's for the rationality uh, pressure signal. And the rationality pressure signal on the early sensors was about 1,000 to, to 3,000 PSI, less than, the, than the, the actual pressure, but it mirrored the actual pressure just that value lower, like I said, about a thousand to three thousand lower, depending on the engine and the calibration. Um, the most current one that I saw in a brand new X15 2450, if I recall, it mirrored the fuel pressure. So if the fuel pressure was 12,000, the rationality sensor read 12,000. There are actually two separate sensing signals. Or, or sensing portions or sensing chips inside the, the sensor that uh, measures this pressure. And they did that to uh, help them with fault codes and when to log fault codes, when not to log fault codes. They don't talk about it. I think the rationality part of the sensor might be dampened so that if you get fuel pressure spikes, the rationality part maybe won't see them unless they're really severe and then that'll help from logging your 559s or your 1911 over rail pressure uh, faults. This is a sensor that logs the that tells the ECM the pressure and then if it's off, if it's over or under the commanded, that'll drive the fault codes, the dreaded 559 or the 1911 overpressure faults. There are other faults. I don't know why, but different engine families, different ECM platforms will have different fault numbers for the same actual fault. Uh, there's a reason for that. I That's ab above my pay grade, as they say. So that's something you'd have to ask a programmer, I guess, if you could ever find one. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, fuel rail pressure sensor. It will be located in different places on different rails. Some it's on the rear of the rail, some it's on the side of the rail, some it's on the front of the rail. Some of these sensors you can buy just the sensor. Other ones, when the rail pressure sensor fails, you have to buy the whole darn rail. Usually on the very low horsepower B67s, you end up buying the whole rail if the uh, high pressure relief fails or if the rail pressure sensor fails. Uh, you don't know until you actually go to buy it whether you're buying the whole rail 
or just the sensor. So let's take a look at a rail pressure sensor uh, in a common rail. Here we go. So this arrow is pointing to the body of the sensor where all the electronics are, are kept. And that screws into a fitting there in the back of the rail. This is the boot. This boot seals the connector. It's a pain to get off, but it's there because people pressure wash engines. And that's the uh, fitting on the right that the, the uh, sensor would screw into. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe, and we'll see you next time.